just the two hours that Good Day Dakota is on the air, about 11 people will die as a result of opioid abuse. Prescription drug abuse has already claimed hundreds of thousands of lives. So how did this happen? Now, Tim, you've been looking into the origin of this crisis for a while now. What have, what have you found? Yeah, well, there's a lot to get through. But the best place to start is probably the year 1996. That's when a drug company uh, called Purdue Pharmaceutical brought to market a drug that's called OxyContin. And it was, inter it was marketed, rather, as a sort of a miracle pill. Uh, Purdue sales uh, representatives, rather, played up the long-lasting pain relief compared to Percocet or Vicodin and downplayed the risk of abuse and addiction. Kaiser Health made public Purdue's marketing plans for OxyContin from that time, and it was touted as the one to start with and the one to stay with. Purdue then doubled its sales forces and flew doctors to all expense paid uh, conferences to try to convince them to prescribe OxyContin. And it worked. In the year 1997, one year after it was introduced, 670,000 prescriptions were written. By the year 2002, 6.2 million OxyContin prescriptions were written, and it became the most prescribed brand name opioid in the country for moderate or severe pain. And that's what laid the groundwork for what we now call the opioid crisis. Regular folks like you and me would go to the doctor for pain, and we'd leave with a prescription for an opioid, like OxyContin or Vicodin. Eventually, that prescription would run out, and some of us would experience withdrawal symptoms, and we'd crave more. So we'd try to get more. Or we'd turn to alternatives, in some cases, heroin or fentanyl, and our lives would change forever if we stayed alive at all. Since the year 1999, about 200,000 people have died of an overdose involving prescription opioids. Here in 2017 alone, about 17,000 people died in that way. Now, the number has started to stabilize, you can see, in the last few years, which is good. But pharmaceutical companies are also starting to be penalized for their alleged role in the crisis. In 2007, Purdue Pharma was fined $634 million for misrepresenting how addictive Oxy could be. And in September of this year, after a $10 billion settlement was reached with many state and local governments, Purdue filed for bankruptcy. Last month, four other drug companies reached a $260 million settlement in Ohio over their role in the crisis as well. Now, Alicia, all the information and the data I just showed you came from the National Institute on Drug Abuse and the American Journal of Public Health. Mm -hmm. And we should note, by the way, that Purdue Pharma's $10 billion settlement that led them to bankruptcy does not include any admission of wrongdoing. Very, very interesting, all this work that you've done here and with all that information. And how exactly does North Dakota fit into this picture? That's a good question. So North Dakota actually tried to sue Purdue as well, but our case is sort of unique. A state judge dismissed our lawsuit against Purdue, saying that it uh, suing one company for the opioid crisis oversimplifies things. That uh, was appealed to the state Supreme Court, but Purdue settled and filed for bankruptcy mm -hmm. before the Supreme Court in North Dakota could give an opinion. Attorney General Wayne Stengem didn't have anything to add wow. to this. Definitely something that uh, will continue to follow. Yeah. A lot of information. Yeah, it goes back a long ways. Yeah, absolutely. Let's turn it over to Amber now.